<laughs> ROFL, LMAO, friend, and all those other short terms. What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and I'm here with the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G, where you can use those terms. You can use those ROFLs and those LMAOs and those LOLs. You can LOL it all day long if you want to, thanks to an awesome keyboard and some good specs as well. One gigahertz processor, three megapixel camera, front-facing camera, and more. This is the new Sidekick, new hinge, a little bit different, but still stays true to the Sidekick brand. Is this the device you want or do you want to go with something else like the T-Mobile G2X, some of the other devices? One of my favorite features about this device that I just have to point out before we move on is something called cloud texting. You click on it here and you can see a preview. Sidekick's cloud enabled so you can text from the web, your laptop or your tablet. And it's kind of shocking to me that you know devices like this, what this is doing, and what the uh, touchpad is doing with the Pre 3, where you can actually text message from a larger medium like a tablet or like a computer, and then it you know cloud cloud sends to your device and then sends out to your friends. I'm surprised it hasn't taken uh, hasn't taken off earlier. I mean, you look at something like this. I mean, it gets kind of tiring, regardless of how good the keyboard is, to text message you know two bajillion text messages a month on this keyboard. That way, I'm surprised it's something like this hasn't taken off where I can go to my computer like this, type out the text messages on my usual keyboard and then send those through the device. But anyway, you do get that with cloud texting on this. You can learn more at cloudtext.sidekick.com and that'll walk you through how to get it set up. Now obviously this is a device you know, built around customization, built around making it how you want it to be. So you can see theme changer here. This is something unique to the Sidekick line. We'll go through and have a look at some of these themes. We'll see default theme uh, let's see, disguise. Can't remember why I chose funky licious, funky licious, cherry bomb. And then let's see, I can't remember why I chose the current one, cherry bomb, bird on a wire. That sounds dangerous. Actually, no, I said that in the beginning too. That sounds dangerous. Paper lotus, or it just sounds like the movie. Let's see here. Ten bonus points to anybody that knows what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. Let's go with funky licious because I'm funky licious. We'll apply that theme. So you can see it changes the colors, changes the, um, I'll show you back here, for example, changes uh, the colors here, changes the background, makes it a little bit different. You're doing that, and you can see some color changes there. So just minor things, kind of like HTC Sense 2.0, where you change the theme, and it changes the uh, the app drawer, and some of the, wall, the wallpaper, and some of the other things around the device. So customize it to how you want to customize it. You do get those options on the Sidekick 4G. So let's go back in here and take a look at the Media Hub, which is Samsung's answer to kind of that media ecosystem that iTunes has, or that Apple has with iTunes. So you can see Media Hub not nearly fleshed out to the extent that, uh, that iTunes is. But let's say Smallville, for example. I can go to episode 17. I can own that for $2, and I can download it and view it on my device. So I can go, or there's some popular movies. Let's see, Morning Glory, for example. I can own it for 18 bucks, or I can rent it for $4. So watch a preview as well. I don't think it's going to let me watch. Okay, you have to be connected to Wi-Fi to view trailers, which I'm not connected right now. But you get the idea. It gives you the summary and the actors, and you can download. So it's that media ecosystem. They're really trying to work on that media ecosystem that Apple has, and that Apple's had for many years. You know, and Android's really trying to catch up to this. And uh, you know, as of now, they're not quite caught up. But this is a nice step forward. And this is something we saw with the Galaxy S debut last year in New York City, the Samsung Media Hub. So it's nice to see that carry over onto the Sidekick as well. So let's go in here, you know, and you've seen some of the changes to market. I mean, just to say, it's funny because a lot of these applications are changed and I mean, modified for the Sidekick, and then some of those are exactly the same. So you look at something like the Marketplace, for example, or the Android Market, and you can see no differences whatsoever. As soon as it loads up, it looks just like it does on every other Android device. So you can see, you know, the typical carousel, Let's go to just real estate, for example. Use it in portrait and in landscape. No difference here with description, with related links, with pictures, with screenshots, uh, developer info, and more. And then when you go to something like, same thing when you go to, let's scroll over and go to Gmail, for example. Same thing. I mean, you look at this, you wouldn't be able to tell it from any other Android device. It's exactly the same. So you compare this to something like the messaging application, which has been heavily modified for the, uh, for the sidekick demographic. And, uh, you know, it's just funny to see that, that some of those programs aren't changed and some are. But you do get, you know, so all the standard Android things on this device that you do with the other devices. Let's check out the 3 megapixel camera on the back. And like I said, there's no flash. So, 
capability is going to be pretty limited. Let's see here. Uh, we'll take a picture of the T-Mobile G2X, and you can see it's pretty stock looking camera interface here. Let's see. Boop -a -doop -a -doop, shooting mode, front facing camera, camcorder, shooting mode, default destination, and then some settings as well. So you can see, just to give you an idea of what the uh, actual settings look like. I'm going to try to zoom in here on the T-Mobile logo, get an idea. It does have pretty decent autofocus, but we're going to take this picture. And then we're going to go back and take a look. So you can see it's 3 megapixel picture quality. It's nothing too exciting. Let me wait for it to kind of focus in there if it does. There we go. Nothing too exciting. And, you know, obviously I'm, I have light shining down on this. So it's a well-lit situation. If you're in a dark place, it's not going to be that exciting in terms of picture quality. You do have the front-facing camera, so you can video chat on the fly. But uh, if you're looking for, you know, your camera buff, you're looking for something to take pictures with on a daily basis, this may not be your device since the camera is pretty low resolution. Let's have a look at Quadrant Standard and at some speed test numbers so we can see what the network speeds are like. Let's jump into Quadrant Standard first. Yeah, I've actually been pretty impressed with this device for what it is. I mean, 100 bucks, awesome QWERTY keyboard, and it's funny to me that they, you know, target this demographic, the people that buy these as, you know, teenagers, because, you know, I see a lot of potential here for business users and for people that need a physical QWERTY keyboard. I think if they made an option like this without the group texting, without all the, uh, without all the, uh, the added stuff and just put a stock build of Android on, I think you could appeal to, you know, and run those separately, like maybe Sidekick 1, Sidekick 2, creative, obviously more creative names than that, but they could appeal to uh, business people and other people that otherwise wouldn't be interested in something like this. So I think there's a lot of potential. It's an awesome keyboard. I really enjoy this device. And, uh, you know, I think personally I'd recommend it to anybody that's looking for a uh, physical QWERTY Android device on T-Mobile or anybody that's looking to switch as well. Call quality has been good. I've been impressed with that. Battery life, like I said, pretty decent for what I've used it for. And, uh, you know, when I took it to the T-Mobile dead spot. It was choppy here and there, but overall I was pretty impressed. Okay, benchmark, you know, your device 947. So it's not the fastest device in the world, but as you know, you've seen over the course of six months or so with these quadrant standard numbers, the numbers you see here don't always translate into real life, uh, real life figures. I mean, this device has operated pretty quickly all throughout the, uh, throughout the review, throughout the time I've used it, and more I've been pretty impressed with it. So overall I would still recommend the device. So don't read into that too much, but 947, a little bit low on the quadrant standard front. Let's go to settings, change the server here and take a look at some of the speed tests. We'll do Greensboro. For whatever reason, the Charlotte uh, server seems to be offline. So we're going to do Greensboro. We're going to begin the test and we'll see what it comes in at here. 4G again, been very good, very consistent for the most part in this area. So we'll see, okay, pulling in about 5.3 megabits per second on the download and then on the upload. Actually, I'm going to switch it over. 5.21 megabits per second, and then 0.82. So a little slow on the upload, but then you can see here's what the results look like across the board since I've been testing it. 5.21, or since I last reset it, you know, somewhere between four high fours to low fives, and then between you know high ones, uh, or between you know high 0.8 to about 1.7. So speeds have been pretty decent. Downloads great. Uploads, yeah, not too great, but. Uh, the downloads have been good. So overall, you know, great device. I've been impressed with it for a hundred bucks. I think the price point's good. And I think this can appeal to A, people that, you know, enjoy the Sidekick brand that are looking to upgrade, and B, new people that have no idea or aren't familiar with the Sidekick brand, but have always enjoyed Android and want something a little bit different. You know, Android, but something a little bit different than the usual candy bar Android phone that's been hogging the spotlight for the past year and a half. Great device, all around been very pleased with it. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the Sidekick 4G. Keep it locked. I'm going to do a dog fight between this and the T-Mobile G2 to figure out which one's the best and which one's the one to have. That's coming later in the week, so keep it locked on the site for that. And be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We're giving away a bunch of goodies as part of our colossal iPad 2 and smartphone sweepstakes. So keep it locked on the site for that. Like us on Facebook so you can enter to win those. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Let me know what you think of this device. If you bought one, you're planning to buy one, or you have any questions for me, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.